Carolyn, is the death rate for asthma sufferers on the rise? Yes, and I think what Helen is referring to, I received a clipping from a patient in the newspaper. There was a study done in Montreal about uh, asthma and Ventolin usage, and it seemed the more cans of as uh, Ventolin that were used per month, the higher the death rate due to asthma. So there is a link between the drug and the asthma. What it means is asthma is on the rise, people are using more medication, it's not curing the disease, and in fact it's, it's doing quite the opposite. There's much more to asthma than just taking symptomatic drug. Okay, we've got Helen on the line. Hi, Helen, welcome to Q&A. Hi. Hi, now I take it you're an asthma sufferer. Yes, yes, an acute uh, asthma sufferer for quite a number of years now. Okay, well I imagine then you have another question for Dr. Dean, so please yes, go I ahead. Yes, I do, Dr. Dean, and thank you for answering it for me. How can we who are acute asthma sufferers educate uh, motor vehicle drivers about the harm they are doing to us when they leave their engines running? especially during the winter months when air circulation is limited by weather conditions. In our insulated cars, warm clothes, and short trips, uh, I can't seem to get any help from the health department, Ministry of Transport, bus companies, transit commissions, school boards, pollution groups, church bulletins. No one seems to uh, want to help. Well, it's a very specific question you have. I know we're a lot better off than European countries where they don't have any emission controls. You're doing your part and you've done it right here tonight by asking this question. That's very important. And also you have to think of indoor pollution because the healthier you can keep your lungs, then the less trouble you're going to have in these acute situations. When you receive my book, I'd like you to read the section on asthma. It has a lot of important tips for you, including keeping your household spick and span and clean of any chemicals. Mm -hmm. Okay, Helen? Yes, thank you very much. Thank Great. You. We've been of some help to you? Oh, absolutely, yes. Oh. Yes, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Now, the Asthma Society of Canada will also help connect you with a support group in your area or help you set up a group yourself. For more information on asthma, write to the Asthma Society of Canada, Post Office Box 213, Station K, Toronto, M4P2G5, or you can phone area code 416-977-9684. Now, Helen, thank you very much for calling in, and we wish all of you in Niagara Falls a much more prosperous year. We're off to Thunder Bay again for a musical interlude. A welcome to Thunder Bay, the party starts right here. Hi, my name's Gary Erda, and my question's for the legal expert. I've tried to get licensing, and they won't give me one. Why is it against the law for me to play music on the streets? Welcome to Thunder Bay, home of the sweet pioneers. Thank you. Well, Gary's performance out there on the streets of Thunder Bay will at least remind everyone who's tired of shoveling snow that yes, summer will come again, and maybe not soon, but eventually. Now, Gary, we know you're bringing a little atmosphere to the streets of Thunder Bay, but Marianne, is it legal? Well, you're going to have to look at the bylaws for Thunder Bay, not only for the uh, city, but also for the police commission. There's lots of bylaws that say that you can get licensing for hot dog carts, video games, arcades, shows, amusement parks, but I'm not sure that you can sing on the streets of Thunder Bay. So, Gary, you're going to have to be careful. I'd take a look at those bylaws if I were you and make absolutely sure that you're not covered. If you're not, they may be asking you to remove yourself from the street uh, besides the fact that you're very colorful. Uh, on the other hand, if nobody complains, keep on going. Okay, now, is it actually, for my clarification, the singing that's illegal or the asking for money that's illegal? It's the fact that he's not covered for licensing, so it's not the singing or the asking for money. It's just the fact that you're not permitted to carry on business on the street. Okay, pay heed, Gary. Now, as much as we appreciate technology, it's still always nice to receive a letter. This one comes from Jenny Brown of London, Ontario. Now, Jenny says that she's curious as to how to find a reliable homeopathic physician that is an MD who is also trained in homeopathy. She also asks, is AB, ND, FS, CP, a reliable degree or just an alphabet soup? Now, she adds that she presently treats herself for minor ailments, but would like a good doctor for more serious problems. Well, I think most of us share that sentiment, Jenny. So, Carolyn, first things first, how do you find a good homeopathic physician who is also an MD? Well, Jenny, I think you're going to have to move to England and live with the Queen, because she has a homeopathic MD 
and uh, we, we just don't make them over here. Homeopathy is a science and medicine of using uh, herbal organic materials in infinitesimal amounts to boost the body's own natural healing system to heal itself. It's non-toxic, inexpensive, and used all over the world. There's over a hundred studies now that have proven that this type of uh, treatment works effectively and efficiently. And for some reason or other, the medical establishment hasn't caught on yet. And we have to have more training. We have to have doctors who learn this, be licensed in it, so that people can feel confident going to someone, because we do need this type of licensing. Okay, now what about these initials that Jenny was talking about? Is that... ND, as far as I know, means naturopathic doctor. The other is a bit of soup to me. I think our callers are going to have to call in and let us know what, what they know of that uh, qualification. Okay, now you're a homeopathic doctor, though, and an MD. How do you manage to juggle sort of the both sort of images of the career so successfully? Well, I guess I got into it because it's, um, it's my background. My family background is in homeopathy and herbal medicine. But I don't have a license in homeopath homeopathy. I've taken courses through England and all over the States. And I've done 20 years of work, so I've established a, a reputation. But someone starting out, it is going to be very difficult. As I said, we have to get licensing and education in the universities f for this type of work. So if somebody really wanted to find somebody who was like you, it would just be a matter of feeling for a comfortable fit? That's right. Okay. Well, Marianne, this next question comes via video from Bell River, and it's a very touching plea for uh, trying to help uh, resolve a custody issue. My name is Tom Quick, and I've been divorced a few years now, and uh, I have signed access to papers that there to see my son, but I can't see him, I'm not allowed to talk to him, and it's going on a year, well, almost a year now where I haven't been able to uh, uh, talk to him. I got papers right here, it says here, paragraph 2A, be defended. Thomas Edward Quick shall have reasonable access to said child upon 48 hours notice to the plaintiff to include but not be limited to the following. One weekend per month, alternating Christmas Eve and Christmas Day with the plaintiff having Christmas Day in 1990 and the defendant having Christmas Eve in 1990. I've talked to different lawyers people there money. and all they say is if you have money if you have it x amount of dollars just just to bring it up there before the judge then we can start and but why should i have to pay for papers that i already have saying that i i have the right to Marianne, I know you've looked over the papers. Is there anything Thomas can do? Well, Thomas, I would suggest that you take a shotgun approach if you're going to go to court, and that is that you apply for a motion for contempt, some compensatory access, uh, costs, uh, getting the official guardian involved, perhaps some new or different and stronger types of access. Uh, there is no easy or fair way to talk about this. I've read the uh, court judgment. Uh, yes, you have exactly what you read out to us. Is it going to work all the time? No. Uh, and when these things happen, you have to take things into your own hands. Perhaps even talk to your wife. You may say, oh, that's just ridiculous. I couldn't talk to her in a minute. But that may be a way to do it. If you can't, you're going to have to go to court. And that is expensive and it's unfortunate. And you may want to get the official guardian's office involved so that the child is represented. And I can obviously see that this is a very touching thing to you. Uh, as well it should be, and I'm sure that your child is very concerned about it as well and may not be able to express it in a form so the official guardian's office may be a way in which the child can make that expression. And oftentimes the official guardian's office will act as a mediator. The lawyer will act as a mediator between the parents and perhaps cut down on some of the costs that are involved. Okay, well we've got 